Hello and welcome to Expertage, a thought leadership initiative by QKS Group. I am Ajinge Ingle, your host for today's discussion. Expertage brings together industry leaders and our seasoned analysts to explore the critical topics within the information and technology domain, offering their valuable insights and knowledge sharing. Today, we have an engaging discussion lined up on the evolution of digital experience platforms and the technological advancements shaping their future. We will explore how personalization, omnichannel experiences, low-code, no-code tools, generative AI, and emerging technologies like AR, VR, and IoT are influencing DXPs. We will explore how market drivers, the granularity of customer-specific needs, and the future opportunities for growth and innovation in the DXP landscape. And to discuss this, we are thrilled to have with us Abhishek Rastogi, who is the Head of Sales Strategy and Solutions at LifeRay India. With over 17 years of experience in digital experience platforms, commerce, business process management, and much more, Abhishek brings a wealth of expertise in delivering digital transformation initiatives for large enterprises. Joining Abhishek from QKS Group, we have Shruti Zadav, who is the Vice President and Principal Analyst, and Vaishnavi Analyst. Their extensive research and insights into the DXP market will add immense value to our discussion. Abhishek, Shruti, Vaishnavi, welcome to Expertage. Shruti, I would like to hand over the conversation to you to kick off our discussion. Welcome, Abhishek, to, to our Expertage show, and thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, talking about uh, digital experience platforms, I think uh, we've uh, seen them evolve uh, significantly, driven by increasing demand for personalization, uh, omni-channel experiences. And I think initially, DXPs were uh, primarily focused on content management. Uh, but with growing uh, expectations for seamless and tailored interactions across various touch points, I think they have expanded to integrate marketing, uh, commerce and customer data management. Uh, also, uh, we see uh, this evolution, you know, right now reflects the market's shift towards a more holistic approach to customer engagement where the ability to deliver consistent personalized experiences across all channels is uh, paramount. So from an end user perspective, the need uh, for such experiences have reshaped the digital landscape, making uh, DXPs a critical component for businesses aiming to stay competitive. So Abhishek, with your expertise, uh, you know, we would love to hear your uh, perspective on how in the current scenario, DXPs add value to brands' uh, efforts to fulfill and deliver customers' demands for personal and omni-channel experiences. So, first of all, thank you for having me on today's uh, panel discussion. Uh, yes, you are absolutely right uh, that th there has been a great evolution from the perspective of technological advancement in the DXP. So, we, I, I still remember that in 90s, we used to create static websites using HTML. Then in early 2000, there was evolution of CMS, WCM, then horizontal portals and after 2016 everybody started talking about the DXPs where right. there is more integrated set of technologies uh, apart from the content management you have uh, personalization segmentation forms workflows SEO capabilities commerce uh, CDPs marketing auto integrated marketing automation stack as well and everything bundled together to offer a omni-channel contextual personalized experience to customers and last few years we have been seeing that with the uh, technological advancement in ai and uh, shift of customers toward low code technologies these are certain other drivers which are actually shaping the way the customers used to see the dxp market or it has also created a new uh, persona from the customer perspective right Absolutely. Uh, you know, like you mentioned, uh, low code and also, um, you know, development in AI. So I think because of all those advancements, we see, uh, you know, uh, the market shift uh, here, you know, uh, towards more uh, offering more personalized and omni-channel experience with by leveraging these uh, technologies. So uh, also, I think there are some other key trends uh, in DXP and the allied markets uh, as such of those in market solutions, commerce solutions, and similarly retail solutions. So I think it would be great great to hear from uh, Vaishnavi also uh, on those uh, points. Yes, Shruti, and uh, I think Abhishek mentioned really great points. 
<clears throat> talking about DXPs and how uh, they have evolved and how they cater to a lot more use cases now. And Abhishek mentioned the integration of uh, low-code, no-code tools within DXPs, which I think is so crucial. It's allowing organizations to actually streamline their development process, reducing dependency on IT resources. Apart from this, AI is something Abhishek mentioned, which I think is very uh, potent now. Uh, of course, with DXP, we have uh, key features like AI-enabled search, AI-enabled personalization, greatly becoming standard features within DXP, if they aren't already, that is. And this enhances user uh, interactions and delivers more uh, curated and timely content to them. Further, if I look at uh, the experience of the marketer or the practitioner, the integration of generative AI has actually revolutionized the way content creation is happening now. Generative AI is like backing marketers and being that assistant, helping them generate content efficiently, making the process uh, so much more, with, uh, have so much more unprecedented efficiency, I would say. And of course, again, as Abhishek mentioned about omnichannel experiences. Nowadays, we have uh, so many ubiquitous uh, devices with different modalities of interaction, different channels of engagement. We have AR, VR, we have IoT devices, and uh, this is providing very immersive experiences for customer engagement. And uh, these immersive experiences actually benefit uh, both customer and uh, organizations. They kind of blur the line between physical and digital worlds, and they provide that much of uh, enhanced experiences to them. And uh, if I have to get back to your question, Shruti, just wanted to build on what Abhishek said and getting back to your questions, a lot of the trends that we see in uh, not just the market of DXP, but also allied markets. We see in MarkTech, we see in commerce solutions, the trend of uh, headless API-first architectures and composability. So we now see composability is actually making it um, easier for DXPs to cater to a wider variety of business use cases. And uh, organizations through this innovative approach now have the ability to pick and choose, you know, package business capabilities with pre-designed functionalities that are designed to cater to business needs that they have, very specific business needs that they have. And this, um, this shift, I would say, towards this composable headless, all of this further underscores the market's move towards the creation of modular customizable solutions for clients, emphasizing flexibility and modularity for them. And uh, this allows businesses to really tailor their digital experiences to their customers in a more efficient way, omnichannel way. So yeah, I think that's something that probably sums up a few trends that we have seen. So probably getting back to um, uh, if you want to add something to that, Shruti, that would be great. No, I think you've covered some of the uh, most important trends as well, uh, Vashni, especially when you talked about uh, headless commerce and also composability. I think that's composable commerce is all that we hear nowadays. So I yes. think uh, that's giving the flexibility uh, to businesses to pick and choose and, you know, uh, customize uh, their, uh, you know, solutions to, uh, on basis of their uh, use cases. So that's a great point. Uh, so uh, also, I think, um, Abhishek, it would be great to know uh, your uh, predictions on what emerges, emerging technologies or trends that provide the biggest opportunities for growth and innovation in a DXP as such. Sure. Uh, so there are multiple trends uh, that are there in the market. Of course, AI and machine learning leads the way. Then the headless architecture, low code, shift toward low code, then voice and visual search, and then the uh, ability to support multiple integrated touch points. So these are some of the trends we are seeing, but the biggest impact that I see personally that would make uh, in the, uh, that would have an, on the DXP market and the way the DXP platforms evolve is uh, how we well we integrate the AI ML technologies in the current DXP platform, because there are so many numerous use cases that the uh, platform can cater to. Second is how more we empower the end business user because see inherently the either it was horizontal portal or cms they were always built for the developers right. now business demands are increasing so rapidly that the marketers or maybe digital leaders in the organization they want to have control of the application so they want to change things on the fly rather than depending of course we know not everything will happen 
uh, in absolute manner. But yes, they still want to have control. If they want to launch a new campaign, why they need to depend on somebody in IT? So that's another area, uh, low code. In fact, when we see from our side, uh, we are actually competing with some of the key low code, pure play low code platforms in our markets. So it's not about always competing with the DXP players. Okay. We are also competing with the pure play uh, low code platforms, which are, and especially the use cases are more oriented to B2B, where we are automating okay. the dealer, supplier, or a vendor portal kind of engagement along with all the journeys on top of your ERPs or the core system. Right. So, so even the use cases, people are seeing DXP have changed from the website and the commerce to Absolutely. now process automation, self-service portals, and it has spread across B2C, B2B, and B2E, all three areas. Yeah, that, that's right. Yes. Indeed, Vashmi, would you like to add something to this? Yes, Shruti. I think Abhishek very rightly said that uh, the one thing we don't usually mention, which is so key, is B2B as well as B2E use cases along with B2C use cases. And now we look at employee experience being such a crucial part of a uh, lot of uh, organization strategies, actually, in the digital transformation journey itself. So it's great that Abhishek pointed that out, as well as B2B, as well as vendor relationships, partner relationships for that. DXPs are actually coming into play here. So uh, yeah, all these new use cases that have come up have also come up due to these technological advancements that the DXP has seen. And um, a lot of this, uh, uh, these advancements actually add up and drive a demand for more, even end users actually expect a more personalized and as Abhishek mentioned, integrated and responsive digital experience. Um, so the innovation such as AIML, again, very crucial and uh, advanced analytics capabilities that DXP has, everything is so crucial, all adds up to enable DXPs to cater to end users and bring about a very seamless and personalized experience. So as businesses seek to kind of leverage these technologies, DXP is actually continuously evolving and adapting to meet these growing expectations. And uh, yeah, I think that was uh, pretty much sums it up. I think the trends and the way the market is kind of moving DXP. So apart from that, I think um, one question I had, Shruti, for Abhishek was, uh, uh, I know that Abhishek has recently talked about uh, the manufacturing sector, the in the manufacturing sector, and probably it would be great for us to know from your background and from your experience, if you could dwell, dwell in, delve into a little more on the market demands of industry-specific solutions, which I think is such an interesting topic, even within DXPs. And... Uh, uh, what other insights you think are uh, you can provide on high impact or rather high potential industries as well as high potential geographies? We know that APAC is one. So a little more experience of yours would uh, sure. benefit. Uh, absolutely. It's, it's a great question. So, so Lifeway is a partner first organization. We always encourage our partners to develop new accelerators, focus yes. vertical solutions. And uh, if we talk about some of the key verticals where our partners have developed those accelerators are uh, insurance, banking, uh, manufacturing, and public sectors. And we are seeing increase uh, across all geographies also, we see increased demand for DXPs from these verticals spatially. So there are partners which have developed uh, uh, a procurement module on life ring. There are partners which have developed uh, in digital insurance stack with a product configurator to launch new insurance journeys, D2C journeys. Because now with certain regulatory authorities like in India, IRDA has allowed companies to launch the product and then take approval. So everyone wants to come with a new model, new product model so that they can increase their sales. So they want to launch their product journeys faster. Then there are players uh, which have developed some kind of early warning systems for banking and uh, financial services where they monitor the data uh, from a, of a loan and then identify if there is a risk potentials. Of course, there are such integrated technologies that integrate with the DXPs to bring that outcome. So these are the way we have been able to cater to the increased demand of solution accelerators. But Primarily from an OEM perspective, we always encourage partners to develop these 
we have a marketplace we have a proper oem model to encourage the partner from a overall market perspective we see currently the dxp market is stand between 11 to 12 billion dollar usd and we are seeing it annually grow by a rate of 8 to 8.5 percent annually and uh, yes of course apec is quick in adopting now did although the initially it used to be north america which used to lead the way followed by europe now a we are seeing the increased demand from apec and the primary industries that we see it coming from is across the globe is the bfsi manufacturing automobile your public sector enterprises of course retail and e-commerce has always also contributed post covid because of the shift in consumer behavior and even now we are seeing a requirement of marketplace kind of solutions coming from non traditional industries like banking and financial services with multiple such entities developing their marketplaces so that they can bring a new line of business into their uh, complete ecosystem that's a great answer vishek so uh, just a little more emphasis on uh, the geography part i think you mentioned apac is definitely faster adopting do you see it kind of surpass in terms of growth rate surpass other geographies and within apac what you think is the fastest market see uh, predominantly uh, as i mentioned earlier as well uh, uh, from a, if you see any dxp player in the market most of their business uh, comes either they have north america or europe as the top region from the business perspective and apec yes. always used to stand third or fourth in the entire uh, revenue uh, generation perspective but now if we see the economies in apec region like if especially in india the kind of way we are growing and the way are the customers now want everything uh, from a contextual perspective the behavior of indian customers are uh, changing and secondly one of the key shifts that i have seen is that most of the digital transformation that happened in india was 10 or 5 years back now again those organizations are modernizing the experience either it is for their customers or for their uh, suppliers or partners or it is for their employees as well so there is an increased focus on digital transformation uh, in india as a region and then we also see growth coming from other apac markets like uh, anz singapore or japan as well great now is great to hear these insights abhishek shruti do you want to add something no oh, i think great uh, insights abhishek especially from a growth perspective for the other geogra- geographies and like you rightly mentioned it was all like the early adopt- adopters of any technology as we see it's, it was always north america followed by europe but like due to digital transformation across our apac region as well we see a faster adoption and growth rate for the dxp market there, there. so great uh, perspective also on the industry side i think uh, also on how b2b um, cases are also use cases are also being catered through dxp so great insights thank you and i think uh, to sum it up i think digitalization has you know i think led to the customer journey landscape evolve and becoming more uh, complex as well so the demand for personalization is also growing uh, and i think even as more touch points are being added to customer journey uh, this is for the evolving so in i think in uh, addition uh, customers are going uh, on you know also on parallel journeys across variety of devices and channels and with personalized omni channel uh, curated content dxp i think with uh, a key puzzle piece in reaching audiences through uh, content with um, content most likely to inform them and invoke them from their higher engagement levels with the brand so dxp uh, are opening up a multitude of cascading benefits in allowing for faster conversions up selling cross selling opportunities as well and i think the modern uh, dxp uh, platform or so the dxp uh, provides the avenue to design and optimize digital experiences to boost customer loyalty and uh, conversion and also customer satisfaction so i think also also you mentioned about the different uh, use cases and, and also it's not like dxp only uh, you know catering to these use cases was also serving as a low code platform and like you said that you are also competing with the low code vendor so there is there is there is so much of um, 
you know use cases of dxp can handle so i think uh, i think we it was great chatting with you um, abhishek and also great insights uh, uh, from both of you abhishek and vaishnavi and uh, i mean we look forward to you know uh, have more sessions uh, such sessions and uh, know more about the dxp market from you thank you thank you abhishek shruti and vaishnavi for an insightful discussion your expertise has provided valuable perspectives on the evolution of digital experience platforms technological advancements and the future opportunities within the dxp market to our audience thank you for joining us today for expertise we hope you found this session informative and engaging stay tuned for more such conversations with the industry leaders and experts until next time keep keep exploring and innovating in the information and technology domain goodbye and thank you